How's it going YouTube? Josh here checking in and this is going to be the first video in a series that I'll be doing which will be a research review series. So essentially I'm going to be doing uh, weekly videos uh, reviewing research related to exercise science, nutrition, sports nutrition, and pretty much anything uh, related to that that I find interesting. If you guys have any papers that you would like me to review from any scientific journals that are related to these topics, uh, feel free to comment below in the description box. So the first paper that I'm going to be reviewing will be coming from the November edition of the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research and the title of the paper is called The Effects of Caffeine Ingestion on Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness. This is by Hurley and colleagues at University of Rhode Island. Uh, now in case you guys haven't heard of Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness, you may have heard the acronym used as DOMS. That's basically uh, the soreness that you get usually roughly 24 to 48 hours post-workout. Now uh, in this study what essentially they were trying to figure out is if there is an effect of caffeine on DOMS, right? If taking caffeine will actually be able to uh, mitigate or reduce some of the effects of DOMS. So what did they do in the study? Essentially they had a small group of college-age students that were roughly 10 people in the study. So relatively small study and, and you'll find that in most of the exercise science uh, studies like this, they tend to be on the smaller side. So it's already known, obviously, that caffeine has uh, ergogenic potential, meaning that it can be used for performance enhancement. Uh, but really in the literature up to now, there's really been nothing showing uh, its benefits or adverse effects as it relates to delayed onset muscle soreness. So essentially what they did in this study is they had these, um, these 10 or so college-aged kids that had already been somewhat trained. They had some resistance training experience. They weren't completely novice. Um, they essentially had them refrain from taking any caffeine for a period of seven days, and then they performed this trial. So there was one group that received caffeine and one group that received a placebo. Now the group that was receiving caffeine got five milligrams per kilogram of caffeine. So to put that into perspective, I weigh roughly a little bit less than 80 kilograms. So that would be a total dose of 400 milligrams of caffeine, which is a pretty substantial amount. In the paper, they say it's roughly about two and a half cups of brewed coffee. Uh, to put it in perspective, it's roughly the size of a large Starbucks. Uh, that's about 400 milligrams caffeine. So anyway, what they did in this experiment is they had uh, one group um, ingest the caffeine, one group ingest the placebo. Then they would wait approximately one hour, uh, following which they performed uh, bicep curls on a preacher curl where they did four sets of 10 using 75% of their one rep max. And then on the fifth set, they went for an, a rep max, essentially. They, they did as many reps as they could until failure to essentially um, induce muscle soreness. They continued to take the, either the caffeine or the placebo for four days after this initial experiment to see if there was any effect of the caffeine, not just acutely, but also uh, continually. Uh, and finally what they did is after this period was done, the initial experiment, they had a period I think in the study it was maybe uh, a week, I'm not exactly sure, where they switched the group. So the group that was initially placebo, they now had uh, take the caffeine and then the group that was the caffeine took the placebo and obviously during the study the, the groups did not know officially if they were in the placebo group or the experimental group. They collected data on muscle soreness as well as uh, performance in the actual exercises, so specifically uh, how well, ex well rather how many reps they each group was able to perform on their fifth set which was the the me uh, rep max set. Uh, they also took uh, blood draws to check uh, levels of creatine kinase which is a product of muscle breakdown and it's correlated very highly with the symptoms of delayed onset muscle soreness. Additionally, they also uh, assessed soreness, not just, you know, uh, asking them how sore they were. They also used a S Borg scale, uh, the CR10 Borg scale, which essentially measures the uh, RPE scale or the rate of perceived exertion. So that pretty much gave a, a sense of how much the participants felt that they were working in each set. Okay, so what did the study actually show? Well, 
Uh, there were some interesting results, and one thing that's important when you're looking at research is really to determine if the results that you're looking at are statistically significant. So there were a lot of changes within the data of the study, but not all of the results were statistically significant. So in the interest of time, I'm only going to present the results that were statistically significant. Okay, so first things first is the difference in soreness in the days following the activity. So there was actually a statistically significant difference, a reduction in soreness in the caffeine group versus the placebo group in days two and three after the exercise, although days four and five there was no statistical significance. In addition to their perceived soreness, there was also a difference of soreness on palpation or how, you know, how sore they felt if somebody touched their bicep uh, with the caffeine group having less soreness on day two of follow-up compared with the soreness with, with the placebo group. Interestingly, this was only seen in day two. On day four, there was actually even greater soreness in the caffeine group. Now, one thing that the researchers suggested this could be uh, a result of is the fact that the caffeine group was actually able to perform more reps on their rep max on that fifth set. So their suggestion is that perhaps this additional soreness four days after is really manifesting as a result of the fact that the, those participants were able to perform more work and create a greater muscle damage. And the effects of the caffeine uh, attenuating the delayed onset muscle soreness is really only significant in days two and three post-exercise. In addition to the muscle soreness being decreased, uh, specifically in uh, the day two and three after the workout, there was also uh, some changes seen in the Borg scale, which again uh, is for the rate of perceived exertion. There was significantly lower uh, rate perceived exertion with the caffeine ingestion group compared with placebo in their third, fourth, and fifth set. So I think this is something that we can all relate to. If you have a fair amount of caffeine before you train, you kind of have the superhero effect. You feel almost like you're invincible and you can keep going and the weights are just not as hard as they normally are. So this research is just validating that. And finally, I mentioned that they did draw some blood to measure the creatine kinase levels and there was no statistically significant difference between the caffeine group versus the placebo group. Okay, so to summarize the results of the study, Essentially, when they ingested the caffeine one hour prior to exercise in a dose of five milligrams per kilogram, and they continued to ingest that dose for four days following exercise, essentially there was reduced muscle soreness in days two and three after exercise compared to placebo. They were able to perform more reps on their, their hard set, and the perception of how difficult the reps were was also uh, reduced. So what is the practical application of this research? Essentially, if you were to ingest this kind of caffeine dose, it suggests that you would be able to perform more work in a given week because your perception of the exertion would be lower and your overall soreness levels would also be lower. So that seems like a good thing. Uh, and I think that if you're already ingesting a fair amount of caffeine, you have coffee and other sources of caffeine, you're probably already experiencing the benefits of, of the caffeine in terms of delaying muscle soreness and uh, being able to improve your performance in the gym. Now, if you don't consume caffeine, should you go out and start having five milligrams per kilogram of caffeine? The answer, in my opinion, is probably not. That's a fair amount of caffeine if you're not used to it. So uh, there have been studies sh using lower doses of caffeine, uh, closer to two and a half milligrams per kilogram, and they have seen some ergogenic potential. Those doses have not been tested for delaying um, onset of muscle soreness. So if that's your goal, you would probably have to work your way up to a higher dose of caffeine every day. But if you were to use caffeine to help your workout, uh, which a lot of people do, they take the pre-workout supplements or have some coffee before their workout. They mentioned in this study that some previous research showed that Essentially, your peak caffeine levels in your blood uh, will show up about an hour after ingestion, which is why in this study they ingested the caffeine one hour prior to performing the exercise. So I would keep that in mind if you're just trying to get the optimal results. Honestly, I wouldn't really change too much just because this is a relatively small study 
they didn't really do it with an entire workout program. It was just a very isolated finding using the single arm bicep curl. So, right, obviously this is just a very preliminary piece of data showing that it is possible to reduce DOMS by ingesting caffeine, but I wouldn't say that this research is enough for you to necessarily go out and start consuming copious amounts of caffeine, and especially if you're not used to it, just because you can end up getting the jitters, having anxiety, tachycardia, like high heart rate, um, you know, it could have, cause trouble sleeping, so I think that we probably need to see a little bit more research of this kind, perhaps applied to a bigger scale, like an entire workout program, to see if this really can be extrapolated to something more than just a single arm bicep curl. So I hope that uh, you guys found this useful. Uh, if you like the video, like the video. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, be sure to comment below uh, if you'd like to see me talk about any other topics. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.